This all began, uh, call it just about nine years ago, President Trump established the Artemis program, committed America to returning to the moon. Now, none of this should be a surprise. Uh, this is the president who created the Space Force. This is also the president that oversaw, during the last year of his term, uh, the return of American spaceflight capability here to Kennedy Space Center after nearly 10 years from when the shuttle was retired. Now, I can tell you we're, we're off to a little bit of a, of a slow start here. We've got about 12 hours to go approximately before uh, the Artemis II vehicle will make its way over to Launch Pad 39B. Now, from there, things will start to pick, we'll, we'll start to pick up the pace a little bit. So we'll put it, and we'll have technicians put it through its motions. We'll ultimately get to, to wet dress. And then from there, this vehicle, along with about 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, is going to accelerate the Artemis II crew here uh, to near-Earth escape velocities, so just under 25,000 miles per hour, farther into space than we've ever sent humans before around the moon back here safely, safely to Earth. Now, this is the start of a very long journey. Now, we ended our last human exploration of the moon in Apollo 17, the 17th mission. Now, I hope someday my kids are going to be watching, maybe decades into the future, the Artemis 100 mission. Now, we're talking about a lot of repeated missions, humans and crew members and cargo going to and from the lunar environment. Now, the architecture you see behind us here with SLS um, and the Orion spacecraft is just, is just the beginning. Now, over time, launching missions like this, we are going to learn a lot. And the vehicle architecture will change. And as it changes, we should be able to undertake uh, repeatable, affordable missions to and from the moon. And in that same vein, just as, the mission start, just as we begin, the cost to undertake a mission like, uh, like we're going to undertake with Artemis II is not inexpensive. But where it'll go as we learn and gradually incorporate reusability is what's going to enable missions like Artemis 100 uh, and beyond, right? And, and why are we doing this? We are doing this to, to fulfill a promise, a promise to the American people that we will return to the moon, a promise to all of the pioneers, the engineers, the scientists, the, the astronauts, the researchers from the 1960s, of which the, laid the foundation that we are that we are standing upon right now.